All right, welcome to calculus. We're going to be looking at surface area. This is surface area of a solid rotated about an axis of some sort. Uh, the example we're going to look at uh, with this as well is going to be a function of x. Uh, so the dx works here quite well. This could also work with a function of y, in, in which that particular instance you need to make sure you're dealing with dy instead. So make sure you make the necessary adjustments as you go. It's really just a matter of changing what your variable is and making sure that you've reset your a and b values to be in terms of y rather than x. But like I said, we're going to be working with the function of x here. Now, if you know, remember how to find arc length, arc length is the integration from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the first derivative squared, right? So there is the arc length. And then what we're doing is we're multiplying by 2 pi f of x. Now, kind of, I, I can go through the whole deviation, and that, but that's not really what this video is about. This video is about getting you to a place where you understand what this function is doing and why it's doing it the way it is. Whenever you see 2 pi, you're always thinking, or what you should always be thinking, is 2 pi r, or 2 pi times the radius of something. So that is what we're dealing with here. So what we're trying to find is the, uh, the, the circumference, if you will, of this particular object. But the thing is, we have um, uh, this added dimension here. It's not strictly talking about... Uh, individual values at every single location. So what we have to do is we have to think about this in terms of following a, a particular path of some sort. What is the distance from two locations over a curved surface? So it's not just a matter of finding the individual uh, distances and the heights and circumferences and adding them together. There's a, there's a whole other aspect of that as you sweep across the, the, the space there, which is why we're doing 2 pi times the uh, f of x and then times the arc length, okay? And that kind of gives us that other dimensional piece there that we're looking for. The example I'm going to look at here in this instance is f of x is going to be equal to the square root of uh, 4 minus x squared. Now, oftentimes when we're dealing with integrations and, and uh, derivatives, it's often easier to think of these things in terms of fractional exponents as opposed to roots. At least it is for me. So I'm going to rewrite that as to the one-half power rather than the square root. That is still f of x there. Now we can see that we're going to need f prime, so I'm going to go ahead and do the first derivative here. So that's going to be one-half times 2x and then the whole thing 4 minus x squared raised to the negative one-half power. Okay, and you can go through and, and remember your chain rule to do those processes. Pause here and back up and redo that derivative. You need to reprove it to yourself, but that's what we're dealing with. We do the something to the one-half power is one-half times that thing to the negative one-half power, because I've subtracted one from the exponent. And then the 2x is the derivative of the interior. Actually, I'm missing a sign, aren't I? Which needs to be negative 2x. Would have caught that in a second anyway. All right, so there's that piece of it at least. And we can often, uh, it might be easier to rewrite this or at least easier to look at it if we, we move some of the pieces around. We have a one half and a two, that's gonna cancel. This x is on top, so it's negative x over four minus x squared to the one half power. And just go ahead and rewrite that with uh, positive exponents as much as we can. That might help just kind of visualization pr uh, processes there. So we got S is equal. S is often used for uh, the surface area. S for surface area, I guess, right? And we're going from a location to some other location. Let's just say in this instance, we're just going from negative one to one. Now, if you were to actually graph this, you, you, you can get an idea of what this shape looks like. Uh, and I encourage you to grab a graphing calculator or go to some other type of web-based graphing system and graph it in one of those locations. So I can put 2 pi on the outside just to kind of get it out of the way uh, because I don't need to deal with that right now. I know my function f is 4 minus x squared. All right, the square root of that. And then I have the uh, other piece here, and I'm going to write this as a bigger part. So I have the square root times another square root. So that's 1 plus in this instance, I end up with, uh, let's see here, I got to square that, don't I? So that's going to be kind of nice because it's going to get rid of the root from the bottom part here. 
and it's going to square my top part and it's also going to make it positive because I mean, that's what we're doing there is making that squared so that's going to give me positive x squared over 4 minus x squared and there there there's that piece of it at least now what do I do from here? Because uh, uh, if you try to do substitution, things just aren't going to match up. You could do u equal to this business inside the root, and then there's that one right there. But then you still don't have, still don't have a way to deal with that x squared, and then there's this plus 1. We could look at cancellation, which doesn't really happen. So what do we do? Well, one thing I do see is we have 1 plus. So that is two different pieces there, if you will. So I'm going to rewrite that for a second. So integration from negative 1 to 1. I'm going to keep this piece as it is for right now, okay? Uh, and then we're going to do this one. So this is going to be the square root. Well, 1, if I rewrite this as a common denominator, that's going to be 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. So what I have is 4 minus x squared plus x squared. So this first piece, I'll go ahead and highlight just to make sure it's clear. This first piece right here is from the common denominator of uh, uh, 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared to give us 1, right? So now all this is over 4 minus x squared. If you need a little bit of time, hit pause and kind of prove that to yourself. Rewrite this off to the side somewhere, do a little scratch work for it. Now when we do that, notice that the x squares are going to cancel, right? So that means we're doing the integration from negative 1 to 1. I forgot my 2 pi, didn't I? There we go. Don't want to ever forget the pi. That's, that's, that's not good. All right, so 4 minus x squared, and then we end up with the square root of 4 over 4 minus x squared. Now, some of you who are chess players may see what's about to happen. It's pretty nice, okay? So you can, at any point, you're always welcome to pause and try to get in front of me on this. So some of this is just recopying some pieces. that I could have definitely done this a lot more efficiently, but I'm just trying to expand it out a little bit for us. So you get 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared, and then dx on the end of it. Now, there it is. If you haven't seen it yet, here it is. I'm going to draw it out for you. That and that will cancel each other out. And what do you now have? Now you have 2, time, two pi times the integration from negative 1 to 1 of 2. All right? So if I have the integration of 2, well, the 2, I could just move out in front if I wanted to and make it 4 pi, but I can also leave it in there. So what's the integration of that? Well, now I have 4 pi, because I'm just going to move the 2 out there with it. The integration of 4, uh, 4 pi times the integration of 1. Well, it's the integration of 1. Well, that's just x evaluated from negative 1 to 1. All right? So what is that? Well, that means that we're just going to plug one in, and we're gonna plug in negative one, right? So that gives us four pi times one minus negative one, which is two, which gives us eight pi. So there is our surface area, eight pi. So the integration, or probably the surface area of the square root of four minus x squared from one, negative one to one is a total of eight pi, and of course this actually works out kind of nicely with this one as is. You'll find that in, in a lot of instances, some of these problems, they end up doing that because of the sheer nature of the function in one place and the, faint, uh, the, the, the function squared in the other place or the derivative function squared in the other place kind of has this uh, effect of having these cancellations occur somewhat often. All right, I hope this was useful. I hope you're learning stuff. Please reach out with questions, comments, and uh, let me know what additional explanations you need. All right, take care.